Hey, what's up, guys? It's Pixelator Apollo, and thanks for stopping by. This is another Teutonic Siege, and from what I heard, this is a very close and epic siege, and we got a lot of cool armies here. So, this was sent in. This is a battle replay sent in by Kitbuka, or I think is how you pronounce your name. And, well, actually, he told me about the siege, but he forgot to save it. And his friend, which is playing as Lithuania, his name is Jamie Dodger 25 he sent in the battle replay. So, thanks guys so much for this battle replay. I'm excited to watch this and commentate on it. But let's go ahead and look at the army comps, starting with the attackers. Now look at this formation by Lithuania. Well, actually, let's look at all the, the armies first. So we have Lithuania. And we have Denmark here being commanded by Elite Parakeet. I played a game with him before. And we have Novgrad by Lara Leisberg, I think is how you pronounce your name. And of course, we have the Mongols by Kitbuka. I think that's an Italian word, I think, from what I remember. And we have the Teutonic Order, which is quite strange because they're teaming up with Lithuania. I guess the Mongols are a uh, enemy of my enemy kind of thing. So uh, this is the, the Teutonic Order is commanded by Pikenshot. So let's go ahead and check out the army comps. Looking at Lithuania first, he's got a cannon. He's got two units of dismounted Bajora. He has about four units of these Sam Gatian Axemen. They look pretty cool. And remember guys, the, the two-handed glitch is not uh, existent in this expansion. They fixed it. So getting units like this is a very good pickup. And then he has two units of the followers of Perkinus. Pretty cool. Pagan god. Um, then he has some Lat... Or he's got some Lat Lavian crossbowmen. Pretty cool. These guys, the cool thing about these guys is that you see how they have the shields on the back. Once they run out of ammo or go into melee, they grab the shields off their back and use them in the melee fight. That's really cool. And then he's got four units of dismounted Shivrik Knights. Let me go a little bit faster here. He's got General's Bodyguard. And he has four units of this very elite, very powerful Jiltine's Chosen. And let's go ahead and check out Denmark. He's got about four units of dismounted feudal knights. He's got a cannon here. And he's got about four units of dismounted shivrick knights. He's got four units of crossbowmen. He has some Norse axemen, very cool looking and very strong because of the fix bug. He's got a general's bodyguard, two general's bodyguards unit, one early and one late. I've I've seen that I've seen that quite a bit off uh, lately, two general bodyguard. Pretty interesting strategy. And then he's got some Gotland Footmen. And that's pretty much Denmark. Here's another unit of Gotland Footmen. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and t check out the Teutonic Order. Uh, he's moving up his Siege Towers right now. He's got about three units of the Burger Pikemen. I call them Hamburger Pikemen. Uh, and then he's got about three units of the Dismounted Ritterbruder. And he's got about two units of Order Militia, and he has about three units of Sword Brethren. And he's got some clergymen. Pretty interesting looking unit. Really cool. They've got little crosses there. And he's got General's Bodyguard. And he's got Nichen, I think is how you pronounce it. A light cav unit. And he's got Christ Knights. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. But he is charging forward. By the way, the money in this game was 40k attackers, 28 defenders. The money difference is massive. Absolutely massive. But let's go ahead and check out the army comps of the defenders before the siege gets any more any more salty here. Um, I'm going to go a general over overview of these two armies. But starting with the Mongolians, he's got about three or four units of Nafatunes. Uh, where, 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 where we go? There's more Nafatunes. He's got, let's see, about three or three or two units of these dismounted archers. They look pretty cool. Look like they're kind of wearing pajamas. Uh, he's got some, about three or four units of dismounted heavy archers. The these guys look like the samurai. My f one of my favorite units. Some of them, some of them are wearing metal masks. They look really cool. Um, so that's the Mongolians here. Here's more dismounted archers. He's got his Khan's guard and a unit of general's bodyguard oh okay there is a cutscene 
Turki. And he's got some Mongol infantry, a couple units of them. More, He's got some dismounted heavy archers. I think I already said them. So yeah, a classic Mongolian army here, and he's got a rocket launcher. So a pretty solid army. But look at this, the two Teutonic Order is coming up very quick. But let's go ahead and check out the Novgorod over here really fast. He's got some spearmen. He's got a lot of dismounted, dismounted boyer sons, about four or five. And he has some dismounted Drazina, about four or five. And he has a trebuchet. And he has some woodsmen. Very nice. I didn't know the siege was going to be this fast. He's got some Burgic Axemen, more Drazina, and that's pretty much his army. And also he has about four units of crossbow militia. He's got like crossbows everywhere. And here's his general's bodyguard. Looks really cool, that black and yellow. Really, really cool. So here we go. Teutonic Order, very quick on the attack. Now this is, a, this is kind of a mistake here. You should always attack with your allies at the same time. But uh, I think he'll do all right. He will do all right. This is kind of crazy. Um, having his men, it's like looking at a bunch of ants going crazy. And he's still firing at this wall even though he has like siege equipment everywhere. So he needs to be careful. He's... Oh. Ooh. He just took out this tower. I'm not sure where he's going with these siege towers. He's just getting destroyed by archers. And that's the great thing about Mongolians, is that they have very great archers, but also in melee, they're very great. So they're a two-in-one unit, it's something the Mongolians need, especially with most rules, uh, limiting their calf. But here comes the Sword Brethren, pretty cool looking unit. They kind of look like poor feudal knights. Ooh, that guy just got hit in the arrow and it didn't even flinch. What a badass. So this siege tower is going a long way around here. Uh, I think Pike and Shock should have had his uh, his assault here a little bit more uh, planned out and uh, and prepared, like go around the long way so you don't get archer fire on your men. But this is a very very crazy crazy assault right now, and he's losing a lot of troops, losing a lot of money right now. These Teutonic Order, they're a pretty awesome faction, but they're very expensive. His Prussian archers. I think I forgot to mention, he had four units of Prussian archers, by the way. And if I was... Yeah, if I was the Mongols and the Novgorod, I would just hold my ground and fight for these walls. Because you already killed about 50 to 100 men here. So... I think uh, it's looking pretty good here. And that's what the Mongols are doing. Look at these swords. Oh man, the swords look so cool. Mongol infantry fighting these Prussian archers. That is not a good idea. Do not run your archers up first. They will get slaughtered. Look at all the dead uh, Teutonic soldiers. And here we go. The sword brethren are about to dive in. They are definitely going to need support from these uh, Mongol infantry. These Mongol infantry will clean up these sword brethren. And there goes the siege tower that catches on fire. But this is, so far, a very crazy battle. And uh, these two players are, are making the smart move here. They're holding back. Uh, I think they're starting to move forward now just because their ally is in big doo-doo. But let's see this combat up in the walls. Yeah, sword brethren, they're still, they're, they're holding strong. Ooh, good kill there. Um... They're just trying to stay in the fight. Do we have the rockets going off yet? Oh, please. Shoot the rockets, please. <laughs> Into the siege tower, please. Wasn't that nice, please? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, we have the order militia coming in. And still... I Wait, is that the... I don't want to miss these rockets. Alright, so we have a tower going down. The Mongol infantry should get a lot of kills. I think it's a smart move here to fight for these walls. I think it's a great move. 
Yeah, these dismounted Devor, they're gonna get a ton of kills. Whoa, there goes a trebuchet shot. So poor Teutonic here. He's just getting focused down. That is why it's so important to attack at the same time with your allies. Because you will get focused. There we go. Brave hearts, here we go. And he can flank around here, but he does have... Oh, look at this, Novgrod. He brought some Kazakh musketeers. That's going to be pretty cool in action. And the rockets, are they... Is he preparing the rockets? I believe so. Please fire these rockets. Oh. Go, go, light them. Light them up, boys. Come on. Oh, you hear that? You hear that? Oh, wait, that might be the oil. Oh, the carnage. Come on. It's taking forever to load. Oh, this would be a beautiful shot. Yes! There they go. He's killing his allies, but that's okay. Oh my god. He is slaughtering that Prussian unit. And they break. So cool. This is like the first time I've ever seen rockets be successful at killing the enemy instead of allies. That was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And look at this Teutonic Order here getting pushed back. But the Mongols are pretty low on this defense here, but they got a ton of kills. And they're doing they're doing very well on this side. And here comes some pikemen charging in. More oil coming down. Oh man, that is absolutely brutal for those pikemen. They're going to lose some morale from that. It looks like he's trying to load up another shot here. Can we get another shot off? Please say yes. I don't know. Oh, he's lighting it. He's lighting it. Oh, yes. Oh, they're both lighting it. Oh, don't stop firing. Oh. I wonder if he kept firing or to route these men, but... Oh, here he comes. He's trying to push through to this main gate, uh, or gap, excuse me. And he's sending in the Christ Knights. They want some revenge. They've seen enough of their brothers fall to the blade of the Mongols. Oh, frame rate droppage there. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know why it's dropping so much. There we go. It's getting a little bit better. So here comes Novgrod. He's sending some spearmen to deal with that enemy cav. Good move there. It's like rock, paper, scissors. What beats what? And these pikemen are trying to push out these dismounted heavy archers. Man, I don't know what it is. Uh, the Teutonic, maybe the Teutonic expansion just isn't as optimized. But my frame rate drops quite a bit whenever I'm recording this. But it looks like the Mongols have sent some Mongol Mongolian infantry to defend his rocket launchers. But... His rocket launcher's got a ton of kills. And we still don't have his allies coming through. The Teutonic Order has been attacking for quite some time. And the allies are not pushing through. And we have Denmark over here kind of walking to the side. Not sure what they're up to. What are you guys up to? It looks like he's running over to help his ally. And yeah, Teutonic Order in uh, big trouble here. The pikemen, they're just standing there getting shot to death. Ooh, cattle or trebuchet shot there. And here comes more uh, Christ Knights. They're gonna charge in here. They are just getting destroyed by archers. We've got uh, some, ooh, some Nafatoons coming in here too. Where are those Nafatoons? I don't know, but it caused this unit to rout. Wow. Mongolians, the ultimate routing force. So what do we have left? We have a lot of defenders. This is looking pretty good for the defenders. Oof. A trebuchet, you need to be careful with that. You don't want to kill your own men. But this was a good defense. Very good defense for the defenders, but a pretty poor attack. Now, a lot of mistakes Pike and Shot made 
First off, never attack. Oh, look, good, good use of Khan's guard taking out that artillery piece. Uh, doesn't look like he took it out completely, but they took it out enough to make it ineffective. But uh, yeah, you, you, you can't attack with that your allies. I can't stress that out enough. Uh, I've said that a hundred times, but I want to say it again. Do not attack without your allies. Unless, like, Pike and Shot had to go or something. He was, like, in a rush. But, uh, yeah. You don't want to attack without your allies. And you want to make sure to break down as many walls as you can with your your artillery piece. He only took down one wall. You could also take out, take out uh, towers and whatnot. But here comes Denmark. Denmark's going to try to push in. I would really uh, not do that. Because Teutonic Order, they pretty much routed completely. So I think this assault here with the, the ladders here is in vain. Uh, I think you should just retreat, group up with your ally. Oh, what is this? He's got some Nafatunes in the open. Why is he doing that? Oh, they are going to get slaughtered by these general bodyguard unit. Ooh, he's, he does have some support, though. Some Nafatunes up on the wall. That's pretty cool. Throwing over the walls. Yeah, you better run out those Nafatunes. I think he was trying to sneak up the Nafatunes to kill the crossbowmen. But uh, I wouldn't do that because Nafatunes are so important that you need to save them for the end of the siege. But we have the crossbowmen pushing forward here. Look how spread out uh, Lithuania is. It's kind of crazy. All right, so what do we have going on over here? Oh, look at we have the rockets setting up again. Oh God, yes, I love rockets. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at the destruction. Look at the destruction. Oh man. He needs to charge those rockets. Those rockets are getting so many kills. Uh, definitely got the money worth out of them. Oh, is he out of ammo? Yeah, I think he used up all his ammo. That here is just abandoning, uh, abandoning the uh, the rocket launchers. Dismounted feudal knights coming in. They should do pretty well against these crossbow militia. They have a little bit of uh, trouble against these boyer sons, but defeat is certain. So this is a pretty good push by Denmark. But I'm pretty sure the Mongolians are going to show up here any time, any minute now. So this is a pretty smart move here by Denmark. Pushing up your archers, trying to get a lot of archer kills. I would get them a little bit closer, get some good point blank shots on these Mongolian dismounted archers. Look how quick they fire. They fire so quick. But they're trying to weaken, weakening their, or they're trying to weaken their numbers with their archers before they move in, which is always, always a good move. And still, this is a pretty good push by Denmark. It looks like he sent in some cav, general's bodyguard. Looks like they route. They're trying to go through this main gate. They might have been killed by the the oil. This oil has been devastating. And I'm pretty sure Pikenshot is out of the game. Yes. He is completely out of the game. That fast. Holy crap. And Mongolian sending more reinforcements over to this side. Now remember, this is 28k to 40k. Oh, frame rate. Don't. Don't do this to me. So yeah, 48k. Or 48. 40k to 28k. Defenders still have a disadvantage here. Remember, this is whoever sent this replay in, uh, Lithuania. This is from his point of view. So when you look at this balance of power, it's still in the attacker's favor. There's still a lot of work to do for the defenders. But let's go back to this wall fight over here. And ooh, these uh, dismounted heavy archers are going to be tough to kill. Look at these Shivrik Knights. They're just like, we're going to stand up at this wall. Check out the scenery. Looks pretty nice. I guess we'll go in and kill now. Oh, <laughs> uh, looks like we have some cab. This is really smart. They're, look at this. Sending out archers to harass Denmark. And then he's using his cab 
to protect them. This is great teamwork here. And usually never you never see people sally forth in, in a siege here. But I wouldn't even chase these guys down, these Norse Axemen. They're just going to get destroyed. Yeah, he pulls them away. Smart move there. Um, very, very good tactics here by the defenders. Putting up a fantastic defense. Ooh, it might get a good charge off. Come on, get a good charge. Do it for Denmark. Pretty solid. Pretty solid charge there. Trying to get your money's worth for the General's Bodyguard because it is a very expensive unit. But these uh, Novgorod General's Bodyguard are going to support those those troops. Same with the Khans Guard. But Denmark is sending more and more troops over here. This is a really bizarre siege. So they're really trying to weaken the numbers here. And it's not very successful. Shooting over the wall with crossbows like this, it's very tough to do to get kills. They're very inaccurate. And uh, it's going to be a challenge for those crossbows to get any kind of kills. But dismounted Shivrick Knights, here they come. And the, the grind on the wall will continue. And look, they they have very few men here. They have a handful of troops. And I think they can defend this side. Because all that's really here, all that's really over here fighting is a couple of Shivrick Knights. And some Gotland footmen. I think they'll they'll do pretty well here on this side. Defenders. The defenders will do pretty well. Got a handful of uh, Mongolian infantry firing their, their bows. Ooh, these Gotland, Gotland footmen are getting harassed. He's going to try to go into the center here. I hear a uh, rally horn from the general's bodyguard here. It's pretty cool. Oh, here we go. We have, well, yes, we have infantry. Heavy infantry charging forward here. Well, just now they're charging. They're going to go through these gaps. And they're going to try to slaughter the enemy. Now remember the, the oil. I think it's pretty smart to move up these followers, followers of Perkinus. Because hopefully the oil will uh, kill these men instead of your more expensive heavy infantry. God, I love these, these axemen. They're so cool. Let's see. See if the oil goes off. Come on. Come on, oil. No oil. Hmm. Hopefully it doesn't use it on these more expensive units. It's gonna be close here. So they're breaking through. Here comes Denmark. He's gonna try to charge in here. Now so far the defenders have put up a great defense, but they don't really have this this uh, area contained very well. Uh, he set up a somewhat good uh, V shape here, but they're getting flanked right now by the followers of Perkinus. But we do have reinforcements here. And this castle's very easy to defend because there's two choke points to the town center. Also, there's this good choke point right here. If I was Lithuania, I would send some troops over this way to flank around. <clears throat> just, just to spread out the defenders. But here we go. Let's go ahead and check out the grind over here. <clears throat> we have Denmark still fighting on these walls. And they're going through this gate. This gate is just like oil frenzy here. Just slaughtering troops as they run in here. I would really just stop running through that gate. It's just getting them a ton of kills. But let's go back here. Oh, we do have some routing here by the Axemen. Wow, that is not good to see for Lithuania. Yeah, we do have some routing from the Novgorod. Yeah, hopefully these guys come back because there's still a healthy number there. Ooh, I don't think this is a great idea by Jamie Dodger 25. He's really clumping up the enemy. And remember, look at this. That is from the Nafatoons. The Nafatoons are going to get a lot of kills here. Uh, you want to just send in two or three units through a gap at a time. That's probably why these guys are routing these Axemen so early because of the Nafatoons. Uh, Nafatoons are just routing freaks. They will cause your men to route so easily. And I wonder if any oil, I don't think any oil has been uh, released on these troops here. 
Man, my frame rate just does not like this game. And they are pushing, they're pushing hard. Novgorod is trying to contain this Lithuanian push. And Denmark's trying to push. One of the armies have lost half their men. Not sure which one. <laughs> Uh, the Mongolian heavy lancers, they're not that great at fighting heavy infantry, and they should cut through them pretty well. Ooh, th those Nafatunes. Where are those Nafatunes? You need to silence the Nafatunes, prevent them from getting good uh, shots. I, I don't know. I, they're like invisible. I cannot find the Nafatunes. I see their, their explosive pots, but I can't find them. Where are they? Here they are. Here's some Nafatunes. There they are, sneaky, sneaky guys. And it looks like they're pushing back Poland or Lithuania here. And this is going to be a close fight here. Have they commit all their troops? It looks like uh, Denmark has some reserves here, but mostly yes, they've committed. Oh, oh, here we go. Good flank. This is what I was talking about. I can't believe I missed this. A great flank here by Lithuania, trying to uh, distract some of the defenders. Um, he should push through here. So his victory is almost a certainty, but it's going to be tough for those Napatoons. You might get some early routing. That's the tricky thing about attacking through this this uh, gap there. But and it looks like they're getting pushed out here. Got the crossbows trying to get some good shots off. There we go. Getting some big routes here from the defenders. So, finally, some good pushing. Good pushing by the attackers. And they're going to flank around this Novgorod unit here. Oh, this is really nice. Well done here by Lithuania. He might save this siege. He might make a comeback here. Uh, he, they need to quickly come over here and support these troops before, before they uh, decide to route because of the Napatoons. But over here, it's pretty much defeat. Uh, this was a very tough loss for the Teutonic Order, going in there like crazy madmen uh, and getting slaughtered. And Den Denmark honestly should have just saved his troops. These men should cut through pretty well. Remember, they had 40k florins, so their troops are very heavily upgraded. And there goes a general, an upgrade general. We do have some routing here from Denmark. That's not good. Those Napatoons are deadly. So deadly. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Ooh, gotta watch out the friendly fire though. Those Napatoons will kill. They will kill their own troops their own allies and he's gonna retreat his his general which is a good idea his general looks pretty bloodied up though when you're defending it's not as important to have a general we have a mid defeat uh, I'm pretty sure that's the Teutonic player pike and shot he, he emits defeat there but the grind continues at this main gate let's go ahead and check out the other side it looks like Mmm, I don't know. They're doing a pretty good job defending off these Lithuanian soldiers. Good old Novgorod. And the woodsmen. They, they just have to kill this general's bodyguard. And what really do they have left? Not much. Ooh, that's good. That is good. Uh, the troops should route here more easily since they lost their general. But they're trying to push. Look at... Oh, man. Look at this. Look at these Nafatunes. Look at this positioning of the Nafatunes. That is just too good. They're just throwing pots straight to the ground. That is a turkey shoot. That is well played by, uh, by the Mongolian player. Ooh, and look at the routing. That is so good. Oh, they are trying to break through. They're trying so hard. Um, there we go. They're pushing through. They have officially broken through this side. Denmark and Lithuania. Uh, the defenders, though, did a great job with the, the amount of troops they had. 
and they're going to rush over and quickly try to defend these troops. If I was Novgorod, I would retreat right now, start forming up a defense at this choke point. This is what it's all going to come down to. Now, remember, they still have some troops over here, but this is very close. This is an extremely close siege. And look at the balance of power. It's still heavily in favor of the attacking force. And look at 76% allies killed, 75% enemies killed. So who will win this? Um, oh no, this is not good. You really need to save these Nafatoons for the town center. And look at this, he's sending up some feudal knights to flank these Nafatoons. Oh, actually, no. He's not. Oh, he's sending another unit of Nafatoons? Get up there. He needs to... Oh my god, look at that. That was like a machine gun of Nafatoon pots. He needs to send units up here now and kill these Nafatoons. If he does not kill the Nafatoons, this will be very challenging for the attackers. But a good, a good positioning here by the Mongolians. Um, you got to be careful though, because they can go up there. They're not sending troops up there. That is unbelievable. And this is the final push. The final push, guys. Uh, got the crossbows. Good positioning with the crossbows. They are pushing. They are pushing. Oh, uh, okay. Now he's sending us some Jiltine, I think. Yes. He's sending up some Dismounted Shivrick Knights, actually. They look really cool. Uh, they have unique shields when you're in Lithuania. This is good, that you're going to silence the Nafatoons. Here comes a General's Bodyguard to give the men morale. That's very important, too, when you're attacking. Do not want to lose your General when you're attacking. And this side is completely abandoned. Actually, no, there's some General's Bodyguard. And it looks like he's just trying to keep these uh, Denmark reinforcements here, these flankers, at bay. Ooh, good charge there with the General's Bodyguard. They should kill the Denmark General's Bodyguard. But look at this. Both sides very even. Actually, al uh, uh, enemies killed 81%. That's pretty good for the attackers. Uh, they're trying to silence these Navatoons. They have to push. Honestly, at this point, I would run past the first uh, grouping of Navatoons. Run past them and uh, try to silence these Nafatoons. But this is a fantastic push. Let's check out the front lines here. We have Danish troops. Lithuanian troops teaming up and look we have some routing routing of six men here It looks like they're retreating some troops here. They're keeping some at reserve. This is really smart Um, I would okay. This is this is ideal right here. Once you kill those Nafatoons. Oh, he didn't get the Nafatoons Did he retreat his men or are they routing? They are routing you have to silence those Nafatoons that is not good. So I, I think he should have pushed forward and silenced these Nafatoons. Once you kill the Nafatoons, you need to send your archers up on this wall. It's absolutely vital that you do that. You will get a ton of kills with those, those uh, troops. But look at this chain route. Oh my god. This is not good. All the men are giving up. They've seen enough. And here comes a flank from the General's Bodyguard. Getting, getting some good kills. Wow. This is a very, very tragic chain route. I've never seen one so tragic. So large. And these cons guard, or these general's bodyguards, Mongolian general's bodyguard, are going to clean up these troops. And it's still in favor of the attackers. Holy crap. This is what it's down to, guys. Oh, here comes some flanking Got Gotland footmen. Let's go back to this fight. I hope these Lithuanian troops return, but it doesn't look like with the general's bodyguard here, just constantly harassing them. I would really get these crossbows up on that wall. 
It's very important. We still have a healthy unit of uh, dismounted Shivrig Knights from Denmark. Some Giotine Chosen. They'll get a lot of kills. But this is so close. 82% of the enemies have been killed. This is pretty much it. This is it of the defenders. Um, and we have the general's bodyguard of the Mongolians running rampant right now. Trying to get, trying to kill these routers so they don't return. So that was a smart play there. He's got his Norse Axeman protecting his crossbowmen against the uh, general's bodyguard. See, if, if he only put these crossbows up on this wall, he wouldn't have to shoot in a, in a, like a rainbow. You could go up on this, shoot directly down on the enemy, and you don't even have to worry about friendly fire, at least not as much. Oh, we got more routing. Some dismounted feudal knights. More crossbows here. Where is that Khan's guard? Oh, he's flanking around. Well done. He sees that these crossbowmen are are not protected, so he's gonna flank around with the Khan's or the general's bodyguard. And here comes the Polish general or Lithuanian general. General. He's gonna get in here and help his the remaining of his soldiers. Ooh, that's not good. Now, if he loses his general, it's definitely over. So it's important that he keeps this general alive. Oh, this is so close. Still heavily in favor of the attackers, but look at this. This could be the game changer right here. This charge from the general's bodyguard. And they're just on a slaughter fest. Here comes the Norse Axemen. They're coming to support. And he's gonna retreat out of there. Great, great maneuvering here by the Mongolian player. Um, see, if you put your crossbows up on this wall, you also wouldn't have to worry about a cab charge. So I think that's a huge mistake by Denmark, Elite Parakeet. And he's going to go ahead and send in the Norse Axemen because that's really all the what's left of the infantry, heavy infantry. And there goes the general, he's going crazy. Oh, there's another Denmark uh, Shivrik Knight here. Ooh, that is not good. That's not good at all. The Lithuanians will lose hope. Oh, he's down to one Giltine chosen. This one man, let's see how long he'll live. Ooh, good. Ooh, he is dead. So, oh my god, this is so close, guys. He's got the troops surrounded here. Uh, victory seems certain for Denmark. But huge route by these crossbowmen. Oh my god. They are going to pull this off. They're going to pull off defending against 40k gold when they only had 28. Also, another rule was max 1 art, which I'm sure you guys assumed was the rule. Because everyone had 1 art. But they're cleaning up these men. Um, it's They've killed 99% of the defenders oh he needs to get his cons guard he needs to get him in here good one good charge in the back of these Norse axemen could cause them to rout let's see here oh go 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 this is so close guys dismounted devour here we go, here comes the the general's bodyguard. This is it. If he can get a good charge here, this could be the game changer. We have some reinforcements from Denmark. They're exhausted though. Look at them. Oh my god, they don't even want to run. They're so tired. And here comes the charge. We are down to a handful of heavy archers. Not even a handful. We are down to three heavy archers. And here comes the charge. Oh, he stops. Why did he stop? He stopped charging. 
That's not good. His bodyguard are very tired. Now, this is another good strategy that you can use against Cav. Oh, here we go. So, that's a good move there to counter charge Cav. Oh, man. Oh, they're dropping like flies against these Norse Axemen. I, I, what I was going to say is another good strategy against Cav when you have infantry. Oh, there goes the Mongolian. Mongolian uh, general. But what I was saying about the infantry is when you're down to just infantry and they have enemy Cav, have your men around this corner. It makes Cav kind of buggy and the Cav can't really get a good charge off in the corner. But he's chasing him down with these Norse Axemen. And it's just down to one man. This, that is game. That is game. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the attackers. It was down to a handful of troops. Elite Parakeet doing a very good job on his, his attack here. Getting the most kills. Uh, Jamie Dodger getting 646. And Pike and Shot getting uh, 303. So... Mongols, holy crap, getting 1,704 kills, and Novgorod getting 885. Even though they lost the siege, I still say they deserve a victory here because they almost defeated 40k gold. That is a crazy amount of difference. So, uh, yeah, I think Denmark, if he put his crossbows up here, he could have won a lot, uh, a lot more easily. He would have gotten more kills, but they still won in the end. Uh, Pike and Shot, he uh, screwed up there a little bit in the beginning, attacked way too quick, and his attack was uh, kind of sloppy, uh, which is why he only got 303 kills. But it was enough to win, and I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I'll see you next time.